welcome to the MediaTek Starts Pitching Contest. My name is Clelia. I am the coordinator of Media Motor Europe. And uh, today it's the pitching contest of the startups of Media Motor Europe. Um, I work at VRT in Brussels, and together with our company, we have built a uh, coaching program for media startups. And we did this together with um, partners spread all over Europe. Um, Media Motor Europe is a European funded project that started in 2020. And since then, we have coached now until now until 60 startups. Um, that have solutions for the media. So today, it's uh, the big moment, the big day where we finally get to have a live pitching event, not online, not via Zoom, but live on a stage, and we're really glad to make this happen for the startups and give them the opportunity. So, enough about me, enough about Media Motor Europe. We're gonna let the startup pitch in a second. I would just like to introduce the jury as well, because uh, it's not just a pitching moment, it's uh, a contest and there will be uh, judges and also a prize. So the judges are sitting back there. Uh, it's very important people, <laughs> very important people that will judge you. So we have, uh, um, in the middle we have Odd Gervin, who is the project manager of Norwegian Cognitive Center. Um, then next to him on, the, on my left is Knut Alfreds, who is the Chief Commercial Officer of Fun Group. And to, his, uh, to my right is Peter Oller, who is the Co-Founder and Chief Innovation Officer of VizRT. So there will be... Um, and as you know, the price for this uh, pitching context is a two-year membership to the Media City Bergen Cluster, uh, which is a really big value in price that you will get for free. So that's really great. So let's get started with the pitching contest. I will invite the first startups, Sol, to, to come up front. Yes. All right, um, so my name is Philco, which is spelled like that, and our company is called So, which is spelled like that, but it's pronounced So, it usually goes wrong. Um, and I'm talking today about a platform called Tally. So, if I had more than four minutes, I would usually reflect on the rise of online streaming and the decline of traditional media, and that's a story that would touch on programmed versus on-demand content, and passive versus interactive uh, content consumption. But I have to skip ahead, so I'm going to come out and say that we believe that the future of uh, media is real-time. And real-time means um, that upsta updates to information are available instantly and also to everyone. And that's especially true for programmed and interactive content. So when we say everyone, we also mean two-way. So it's about both broadcasting but also receiving updates to information. Uh, and also at scale, so that when you have an audience of millions, it still works. Um, and if you have real-time uh, two-way uh, communication, then that provides very, uh, or basically sets the stage to inform, uh, engage, and interact with audience in, audiences in very exciting ways. And this is what our platform Tally facilitates. So you might be thinking, um, real-time technology at scale, is that new? No, it isn't. But it's usually very hard to do or prohibitively expensive because the technology options are very few um, and the people that implement this, these technologies charge very high fees. And also the, comp the complexity of the applications that you can make um, is quite limited. Um, and as a result, we usually see real-time technology being implemented in relatively big budget productions in media. So our solution, abstractly, it's quite straightforward. We want to make it affordable and easy to use real-time technology at scale. In other words, we want to commoditize it. So how do we do that? Well, we start from scratch. So what we've done, we've made our own uh, real-time graph database. Um, if you don't know what a graph database is, just remember that it's a way to store very complex data. And we also happen to make it very fast. Uh, we also made our own uh, managed cloud infrastructure, which happens to be cloud agnostic and more than 10 times cheaper to run than alternatives, and that's very significant. Um, and on top of that, we've built Tally, um, which is a platform to power real-time interactive applications at scale. So what is Tally exactly? It's a bunch of things. So it is managed infrastructure. 
Um, it brings a CMS for interactive content. We have a customizable audience UI that ships out of the box with which you can make voting, voting inquisits very fast. But we also have APIs ready to integrate with third party software like results, maybe for graphics like with VizRT. Um, but it's also ready to power your existing uh, applications and platforms. And one example of such applications is the app for the Eurovision Song Contest that we made this year. And that includes a live feature, which is a real-time component that shows um, artist information about the acts that are currently or at present then would be performing on stage. And we added a new feature to this, which is a cheering feature which allowed people from home to cheer for their artists. Uh, and we use that data to feed to the audio team of Eurovision to enhance the audio of the cheering noise that would show up on video. Um, because there was only a limited crowd in the studio because of COVID restrictions. And this feature was used over 340 million times during the event. The infrastructure for this was scaled up to deal with 10 million concurrent users. And it only cost us 2,000 euros to run it, across a, run it across an entire week. And that's a big, big savings prior to previous implementations. So about us, we're a team of 13 people with seven engineers. We are privately funded. Uh, we are making some ad hoc revenue, so we're doing some projects. And we're hopefully soon making recurring revenue for year-round deals. And what we're looking for is exposure in new markets. We're currently mostly exposed to the German market. Uh, for strategic partners who want to try very exciting things with us. Um, and of course, customers. So what should you remember from my pitch? Is that we've built a complete stack of proprietary technology to commoditize real-time applications at scale with which you can save over 90% on cloud costs and host it wherever you want. And we believe that Tally will power the future of media, which also includes the internet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sol. Um, are there any questions from the jury for, uh, for him? Yeah, you can stay here. Um, so do you have any customers uh, now? And, and the users you have, uh, what is their commitment to the company? Yeah, so is it still active? Ah, oh, yes. Um, so the Eurovision Song Contest is one of our bigger customers, uh, which we served on a per project basis. And we're doing that for several companies right now. So mostly we're working up to a single event for which we get a remuneration. Um, and what we're trying to do is get our customers onboarded on a year-round deal. Because Tally as a platform allows our customers to do interaction very frequently. Um, and that only really makes sense if we can ch charge them or if they pay only like a, a limited fee for a year-round. So basically, we want to give them volume um, and charge upfront known, well, like known upfront prices. But that's a step we still have to make. Just, just, and what are you thinking on how you're going to reach new customers? What's your thinking about that? So we have a, a partner in a, in a media company that's existed for some time uh, in the German market that's, that's been historically working in SMS and uh, call business. Um, and they have quite strong connections to many broadcasters. So that's our prime channel with, on which we do sales right now, uh, which also gives us enough feeding ground to really test our hypotheses, test our product, and refine. Because every project that we do, we run into new requirements, um, new requests from customers that we just didn't think of ourselves yet. Uh, and right now, that's, that's plenty. Uh, but we're mostly still targeting, let's say, existing formats, on top of which we would provide interactivity. But with real-time technology in a general sense, we can do very exciting things, which also requires us to sit at the table with creative people to come up with formats and, and use cases that don't exist yet. Uh, and that's the type of strategic partner that we're looking for. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Samish. There you go. Never know. Try to put it a little higher. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Timo, and I'm a co founder of Sami. Um, our office is located in Amsterdam, and across the street, there's a zoo. And um, the zoo is advertising on social media to gain members. And they do that with a small video with a monkey in it. But what if people from my age, male, living in Amsterdam, don't like monkeys, but they rather see tigers? 
Um, wouldn't it be great for the zoo to be able to advertise with, with tigers instead? And that's where Summy steps in. So Summy creates hyper-personalized video ads um, that, res that really resonate with your target audience. Um, we try to do that fully automated, so from beginning to the end. Um, and we do that because we saw a couple of problems within the uh, field of video advertisement. One of the problems is that it's very difficult to, to start, especially if you don't have ex experience yet in video advertisement. Um, often this is leading towards bad results, um, which can be very demotivating. Another one is that there are a lot of platforms out there like Facebook, Snapchat, Spotify, um, it can be very hard to manage them all. Then, like I mentioned, ads nowadays are very generic, especially video ads. Monitoring your campaigns and adjusting your video ads is very time consuming. And because of all that, we came up with Summy, and Summy is here to solve these problems. Um, we make sure that your campaigns are starting with a kickstart. Um, so we are reusing all the historical data we have from campaigns we are doing for all our customers and translating that into your first campaign. We make sure each ad meets platform specific requirements um, and best practices so your ads will perform right away. Then every uh, Every ad we will, uh, every ad semi serves is uniquely created for the target audience, um, and they are monitored by your goals and adjusted if needed. All the insights we are gathering from uh, this whole process are being shared with the target uh, with you via our dashboard. How is this working? Well, you upload your shots into our system, which are then being analyzed by our AI modules. Um, and next, you will create your campaigns and select your target audiences. Sumi then predicts which shots are, will perform best with which target audience and uh, generates multiple um, advertisement videos. It then monitors those advertisement videos and adjusts them based on your goals if needed. Our business module um, is that we generate revenue by yearly and monthly subscriptions. Um, we have three different tiers where the two first tiers are being capped on the amount of um, target groups you can select for your campaigns. Um, there's a very big every year rising uh, advertisement spend market and we try to get a piece of the pie at the digital video advertising market. Um, we think we can manage this because if we look at the competition, uh, we see competitors that are saying that they do something in the field of personalization of video advertisements, but most of the time it's only a change of language or adjusting a template. Um, if we look at our biggest competitors like Smartly or StackAdapt, they do only that. And Fipmo, for example, only uh, gives back the insights from the, from the video advertisements. But we didn't see any competitor yet, which is really changing the, the video itself. Uh, next to me, the management team is existing out of Joppa, uh, which is doing the sales part, and Chichum, which is uh, responsible for the development. And we are at the moment busy with launching the, the MVP. We made 16 different modules, each um, analyzing the, the video content. Uh, and at the moment, we have an MVP which is working with Google Ads. Um, and we are testing that one with two companies in pilot phase. Um, we're performing at the same time different interviews to get feedback from the market and validation. Um, and we started with sales as well, um, doing sales campaigns from two weeks ago, so very recent. Um, we are searching at the moment between one and one and a half million, which is runway for 12 months. Um, and until now, we didn't have any investment. We are paying ourselves from ad consultancy we are doing. Um, and we want to build up uh, uh, our sales and marketing team um, 
And what we try to do is telling the right story on the right platform uh, to the right audience. Um, and with some it's right at your fingertips. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, um, the two pilot customers, can you say a little bit about them and the business uh, agreement you have with them? Yeah, so one is uh, Animal Shine, Bunny J, uh, which is a media company, um, enterprise company, which is uh, uh, acting worldwide, and they, they want uh, to use Summy for sharing summaries, short video fragments of their episodes on their own channels. Uh, and the other one is an agency which has like different kind of companies. So we are at the moment testing with PokerStars, for example. Um, so it's, yeah, we, we try to, to have different kind of types of companies. Uh, can you tell a bit, uh, a bit about your team? Are you only three persons? No, we are with nine persons. Um, so mainly developers uh, from an artificial intelligence point of view. And we recently built up our uh, sales team, and that's why we are searching funding as well to expand uh, the sales team. Can you, can you give an example of what you actually do with the video? Well, just an example of what you do based on the input, what is the manipulations you are intending to do with the video? Yeah, so we are trying to combine all the, all the uh, metrics we are getting, uh, which are saying a lot about um, we as people and what we like to see, um, and then for the, for the different target groups, and combine them with all the information we are extracting from the video, so we can see, okay, this target group likes this kind of um, uh, video, um, and combine those from uh, the data perspective. Um, that will make sure that we can predict every time better um, in front what people like to see, and we fine tune it afterwards by, uh, by generating multiple, uh, multiple video ads and, and chase them along the way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone. Next up is Vplay. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Sebastian, I'm one of the co-founders of Vplay, and like many of out, you out there, I'm a big fan of classical movies. Um, these masterpieces of cinematography have made history around the years, so I believe they should be available to everyone at all times. I personally used to watch these kinds of movies on a service named Crackle, which was a subscription-based service from Sony Pictures. Uh, regretfully, about a year and a half ago, Sony decided to shut it down because they deemed it to be unprofitable. Um, so here's where we are. If we zoom out, we'll see that you know Sony's example with Crackle is just one of the 10,000 companies out there that are struggling with subscription services when it comes to VOD. Um, what we call this is basically subscription fatigue, right? Any household um, usually has around two or three services that they pay for when it comes to VOD. And if you look at the top companies comp competing for that spot, it's kind of easy to tell why nobody else has a chance. Um, so we believe there has to be a fundamental shift towards um, advertising revenue, so from a transition to an advertise-based model. And you know, the, the figures show us that between 2020 and 2023, um, the advertising volume that will come from VOD will, will triple basically to two and a half fold up to upwards of $80 billion in, in revenue. Um, so this is where we come in. At Vplay, we really made it our mission to kind of build the tools that publishers and broadcasters need to create scalable and sustainable um, businesses around their content. Um, our product lineup is composed out of a universal video player and a server-side ad insertion platform. Uh, both of these pro products are on a pay-as-you-grow or revenue share-based model. Um, and each of them is built together with uh, some super cool customers that use them. Um, our universal video player works on smart TVs, mobiles, and the web. Um, it's used to, first of all, secure content and stream it to the users. Uh, then we're offering a whole set of adv advertising um, opportunities to integrate within our player and stream the content. And then we're offering a lot of features specific to the broadcasting industry, like analytics and customizations that the companies need to really deliver a cool experience to their users. 
Um, in addition to our video player, we're offering a cloud-based dynamic ad insertion platform. Uh, what this basically means is that we stitch the video ad inside the video stream, unifying it, making it unique for every user, but at the same time being able to generate up to 25% more revenue for that particular customer because we're able to circumvent the ad blockers, which you know they hate so much. Um, over the past few years, we've worked with all these great companies uh, to kind of help them build their VOD strategy. In that process, we've delivered over 5 billion videos, streams, and ads, and this equates to over $150 million in revenue generated for these companies. Um, how are acquiring partners? You know, we have a bunch of resellers that help us out, and word of mouth is a big, big play for us. Uh, we have a lot of companies coming in because they heard about us at a different customer, and we also love pitching to audiences like this whenever we have a chance at IBC, NAB, or you know, even Bergen now. Um, let me wrap up by telling you a little bit about myself and us. Actually, we're, uh, we're a team that's been working together for roughly 10 years now. This is not our first company. Uh, we've you know, been in the roller coaster for many times in many years. Uh, we've delivered software solutions for Fortune 500 companies. And right now, we're just locked on video because we love the most hardcore technical challenges we can lay our hands on. And just cracking the video code is, is the toughest so far. So um, thanks for having me, and I'm welcoming any questions. Thank you, Sebastian. Any questions from the jury? What is the business model here? So on, like, we have like two main products that we're, we're licensing on the video player. We license on a, on a per usage basis. So the more you stream through our player, the more we charge on a per stream basis. It's a very small fee, but we're talking millions of streams. And on the ad insertion platform, we do a revenue share. So you know, if we're able to hit some marks of extra revenue generated for you on the same inventory, we take a share of that. Do you need to install the whole infrastructure or did everything's, you... everything's So our video player is kind of a SDK, so we run that on the devices, uh, apps, websites, smart TVs. Our ad insertion platform is, a, is, an, is, a, is in the Amazon cloud, so it's a it's a. Yeah, but I was uh, really more leaning towards so what's the lead time from where you get the customer until the system is up and running? Is it? Uh... Well, you know, that usually depends on the customer, not on us. <laughs> but it can be as low as like two weeks, yeah. two, three weeks. Uh, it's usually in the months because customers, but uh, <laughs> we're optimistic. Okay, thank you. Oh, thanks. Next up is Voxelize. Thank you. Whoa. Ah, I'm not that tall. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, uh, my name is Alexis, and I'm here to talk to you about podcast visibility optimization. That is how most users discover websites today. They have an interest and intent, they go to a search engine, Google or Bing, and then they end up on a website. Same applies for apps. They have an intent, they go to the App Store, the Play Store, and they end up discovering an app. And guess what? It's exactly the same for podcasts. You want to learn something about marketing? You go to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you type marketing, and comes a list of podcasts. So what does it mean for podcast publishers? all media companies out there. To grow your audience, being visible is paramount. If you can't be found, you won't be heard, watched, or listened to. Visibility optimization is a craft. I'm sure all of you know about search engine optimization, probably about app store optimization, and there's also podcast visibility optimization. And like every craft, you need some tools. Tools like SEMrush, AppAni, Moz, Airtraff, and the likes. And what those people are doing for search engine optimization or app store optimization, we do for podcast. That's us, Voxelize. We do two things. The first one is an analytic solutions. We provide you with all the data you need to optimize the visibility of your, of your podcast within the listening apps or listening platforms. We also run a do it for you optimization things where we leverage our own data to optimize the visibility of your content. Typically, we see 23% increase in audience of a given podcast within the first two months. Um, all of that is based on a subscription-based model. For the analytics part, between 10 and 20 euro a month. For the do-it-for-you optimization, about 500 euro a month per podcast. Our team, two, two, um, two co-founders, mine and me. Mine has 15 years' experience in data gathering, processing, and enriching. He has been the CTO of a VC-founded company that ended up being acquired by an American competitor. As for me, 
uh, a bit older than I am. Um, I've been the CEO before of uh, OPEX, a Finnish company, where we were offering a B2B SaaS solution for data and insights. And before that, I was in charge of internationalization at Babel, the language learning app. And in that position, I learned to reverse engineer the App Store and Play Store algorithm so that we could spend the right amount of ads to always be on the top of the rankings. Uh, our growth, we launched our analytics solution on the last day of June. Um, we've been growing steady during the summer and accelerating in September. We have clients of any size and shapes from the likes of Welt, that belongs to Axel Springer, a large German media house, to smaller startups. In for service offering, we have more than 80,000 euro in pipe from both media brands and media companies and brands that have branded podcasts with the likes of Dior or Europe One in France. Um, as for the market is, it's a blue ocean. There's no distant alternative on the market today. We are the first one there. Let's enjoy it. Um, our marketing approach, it's pretty simple. The more, the higher the average customer value or contract value, the more we can spend efforts in terms of outreach. So we do everything from online ads, sponsoring newsletter, Google ads, to outreach events and physical meetup. Um, so we are taking off and we're looking for clients. You have a podcast, you want to grow your audience, come and talk to me. You are looking for partners. You are a marketing agency, a consulting agency, a podcast hosting agency or company. We could work together. Come and talk to us. Um, and we will soon be looking for investors because we need more money to accelerate on our growth. And that's it. Before I open to questions. That was actually perfect timing. Exactly four minutes. Perfect. Any questions from the jury? Uh, what is the uh, percentage and in increase in users, paying users, on a year-to-year? -year? What do you mean on paying users? So, you, you showed a quite an impressive growth uh, yep. on the slide there. Are they, are they all paying customers? It's paying users. It's all, um, the growth was for analytics product was for uh, monthly recurring uh, revenue. We have about 18 clients today. We launched last day of June with a free trial, um, and that's so 800, uh, 18 clients, eight, about 800 uh, euro on zero recurring revenues. With regards to your to your customers, are you targeting everyone from the individual with his own podcast to Spotify, or where are your, where is your... We, it's, that's why we really have two, of, two offerings. The, the segment is really like, we segmented in the, what you call the obvious or the influencers, so the average joy of his own podcast, usually they don't monetize, they don't look at data, it's, it's more hobby. If they come, if they find us, and they want to put their credit card in, our, in Stripe, we'll take them, but we don't go after them. Then we have mostly the branded podcast. We see more and more brands having a podcast for, as a marketing channel, as a retention channel. Those, they want to see all the, all the rank. Um, I'll take the example of Dior. Um, Dior wants to be number one on fragrance across all the platforms. They are paying for that. They don't want to do any of the optimization themselves, so we'll do it for them. And then we have the media houses having north of 10, 50, I've seen people with more than 200 podcasts. And those we're discussing with, with more API integrations and to provide all data into the world marketing stack. Thank you. Thanks. Next up is QuestPass. Hello, we are QuestPass. We make people pay attention. This is, what, this is what a typical web page looks like. It has many ads, but those ads are getting less and less effective due to ad fraud, ad blocks, and banner blindness effect. Because of that, the ads are getting also less profitable for publishers, and it's getting worse every year. An alternative? A paywall, but a paywall monetizes only about 6% of the traffic. We've got a solution that works with the rest 94%. How? We have changed advertising to questvertising. This is how it works. You read an article. There is no overwhelming amounts of ads around. After the first part of the story, you see the quest pass. The content below is locked. The quest pass consists of an ad, and question referring to the ad above, and three buttons to choose from. 
If you don't watch the ad carefully, you probably won't choose the right answer. So you would need to wait for five seconds. Because of that, random choice does not pay off. So you've got familiar with the ad and now you can answer the question and enjoy free access to the rest of the article. No payments, no problems. What has changed for advertisers? Everything, because now they have 100% ad visibility, no banner blindness effect, and no ad fraud. They have reached ad block users and they pay only for measurable effects. What has changed for publishers? The profit, because now advertisers know, know what they are paying for and they are ready to pay more for measurable effects. So publishers earn more, much more. What has changed for readers? Well, there is no payment, no need for registration, just a few seconds of attention to reveal free access to valuable content. This is how the well-known advertising model looks like. Very low effectiveness, poor profit. But when we change ad to quest, the magic happens. Click-through rate ratio rises about 60 times. Also, publishers' revenue rises firmly. Effectiveness of our uh, Quest Pass was confirmed in scientific studies run by SWPS University and IAB Poland. And, in, and by more than 80 brands and over 120 campaigns where more than 5 million correct answers were given. So we work in broker model when we run agency between advertisers and publishers and also in SaaS model when we provide access to our system to uh, publishers. So digital media can sell their advertising space on their own directly to advertisers for much higher stakes. In QuestPass, we work in best industry experts, also from Google. Uh, we have started cooperation with over 50 publishers. Among them are, for example, Discovery Channel and Ringel Access Pringle. We are fundraising to strengthen our enterprise ready status and to develop our product to enable also monetization of VOD and mobile apps. And our ultimate goal is to make ad quests as popular as ad words today. Feel free to contact me uh, so I can uh, send you some case studies if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, uh, can you say something about the competitive landscape uh, in this? Well, it's hard to say competitive because at the moment our main competitor is just programmatic market, so normal display ads, so ad form. But we are also co cooperating with them because our other format is uh, we'll, we'll go, we'll join programmatic market. So it's a kind of competitive, also Google, of course, they are the, the main player on the market, and paywalls because on the other hand, we are working for publishers to monetize their content, so like Piano Media, for example, and later pay. But, but in the end, we can also strengthen uh, this conversion for subscription because you can use that only on freemium content. So if you, pay, if you are paying, you don't get any ads, any, ad, any quest passes. So still, there is a next re reason to buy subscription. So it's even hard to say that uh, later pay or Piano is our competitor. It can be also a cooperating company. It depends on publisher and their strategy. What's your challenge when you meet a new customer? What, what makes them, why do they say no if they do say no? And why do they say yes? Oh, the biggest challenge is to start cooperation with big media groups because it takes a few months because they've got many stages and you must go to this manager and to CEO and the, all, the, all, the, all, of, all of them. It takes about half a year to go, for example, through discovery. Ringer was some kind of faster, but also a few months to go through. So that's the main uh, challenge to, to get the right people on time. Can you elaborate a little bit on the business model? Uh, I can go back or I cannot. So we've got two possibilities. There's brokerage model. So when we stand between, we run agency between publisher and uh, advertiser and our media house. Or the second one is SaaS model. So we provide our solution, our system to publishers so they can sell quest passes to this, our ads on their own for a much higher stake. So there are two possibilities. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Next up, we have Exord. There you go. Um, hello, so we're at Exord. Uh, we've been working on this project for a bit of time now, about two years, and what we do is we trace the propagation of information to uh, fight misinformation. So uh, what is misinformation? So misinformation, you can see it pretty much everywhere. You can see it in the US politics where there's manipulation about uh, an ex-presidential candidate uh, questioning the legitimacy of an election. You can see it in climate change when there are uh, popular um, celebrities and figures that are gonna be talking about as if it's still a hoax or questioning scientific legitimacy. Uh, and you can see it also, for example, uh, during the Brexit with targeted Brexit ads. So for example, this one saying that Turkey was going to join the European Union, which is false. And also uh, this kind little arrow pointing towards uh, the 76 million people of Turkey headed right for the UK. Um, and then also you have deep fakes which are coming up where we have uh, an increasingly complex problem of being able to assess whether or not a, vi a video is going to be a source of truth or not. Um, so what is our solution to this problem? So what we're doing is we're d taking a different approach from what already exists. We're not gonna do fact checking. What we're gonna be interested in is the propagation of information on the internet. We're gonna see how information propagates itself and we're gonna make clusters out of this and we're gonna establish, and the idea is basically to say, um, if information is being relayed by a bunch of different uh, media platforms, it starts acquiring more and more credibility depending on the, on the popularity of these platforms. So for example, this is a screenshot of our data today where we're creating clusters in real time seeing what's being posted on the internet and how information is propagating itself. So our team, just to go quickly over this, so hello, I'm Terrence, I'm the CEO. My objective here in this company is taking care of company vision and business management. Uh, Matias is our excellent uh, CTO, data scientist, and blockchain engineer, so he takes care of everything that's AI right now. And Damian is taking care of Web3 and product management. We're three engineers issued uh, getting out of French school about like two or three years ago. Um, so our go-to market strategy, we're starting off with virality predictions. As we're analyzing the propagation of information, we're also analyzing the speed at which information propagates itself. And these metrics are extremely interesting for traders, investors, journalists, to be able to see the virality trends as they are growing on the internet, as information is actually being aggregated to internet. We are also going to work towards trend analysis a little bit later. We'd like to be able to pitch our application to uh, p uh, political campaign managers for the French elections of May 2022, for example, but also for governments later on to be able to analyze how information propagates itself with regards to subjects like vaccine rollout for COVID. And then finally, our ultimate goal is being able to sell real-time trust scores to popular and rising platforms so that people can be critical with regards to the information that they interact with. Um, our competition, so as I mentioned, we don't do fact checking. What we really do is we just trace the propagation of information. That's really what makes us different from the rest of the competition. We are plug and play, so we, do, uh, we can embed ourselves directly inside the systems. Uh, this is extremely important because people actually, studies show that people don't uh, fact check their information for the most part. You're gonna get your information off Twitter, and then if it aligns with what you think uh, politically, you're just gonna reshare it. Sometimes you don't even click on the, li on the, uh, on the headline, you just look at the headline and you reshare it according to that. So it's really important to be plug and play. And then finally, we're transparent. This is a community-based approach where the community is being rewarded with uh, money so they have an economic incentive to actually uh, to actually work for us and everything is transparent and, trans and traceable you can interact with the system all the code is open source to reinforce the neutrality and trustworthiness of our system and that's pretty much it for me so yeah I'll take your questions what, what is your um, sales strategy here um, okay, okay. Uh, so sales strategy, we're first working on the virality predictions. So we're, uh, this is the first part of the tech, which we need to create anyways, and we're gonna be selling this, as I mentioned, to traders, investors, and journalists. Uh, this is an application that's gonna be available on your phone uh, with a, probably some, a free trial to, to begin with, and then a paying subscription if you wanna continue with the service. And this allows you to trace information cross-platform, which means on Twitter, on Reddit, on whatever, the, whatever you want, whatever type of platform you want. The I'm not sure, I, the, the, virality, the virality thing, I think I can uh, grasp a little bit, but what you, you talk about trust score. Uh, what, what, what has that got to do with that? 
the trust scores, that, that's, so this is the part where I was showing the go-to-market strategy. That's our long-term goal. Uh, okay. We need to be able to scale up. This is actually what makes the strength of our solution is that we can scale up, whereas other competitors like Snopes, for example, have a hard time scaling up uh, because they, need, they have a journalistic approach, which is often opaque as well, where you fact-check information, and they're also uh, you have, that are pay-to-play. So, so your main part now, that is the virality prediction part, is it? To yeah. Yeah. So the virality prediction is, is just the first part of the tech, and then it's going, we're, we're going to be building on from that towards the trust scores. Yeah, and what does that got to do? Deep fake is that also far in the future, or what? deep? And so the the way we proceed is as soon as we trace the propagation of information, deep fakes are going to be interesting because there we're going to be able to see where they're being relayed. What, what are the journalists, for example, that are relaying these deep fakes? So our, in, our system inherently relies on journalism without being a journalistic institution. So you would uh, thrive off fake news? I'm sorry, what? Fake news is good for your business. I mean. Well, I mean, we're trying to fight it. <laughs> we're not trying to make it. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it, but it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Then perhaps I haven't expressed myself correctly, but no, we're trying to fight misinformation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. And last up before the break, there is X News. Good afternoon. My name is Andy, and I'm the CEO of an Austrian company called X News. We built a real time research application, what customers call on steroids. Our customers come from four markets media and entertainment, corporate, government, and education. Those are some of our customers that we can mention public broadcasters, universities, but also governments. The problem is this. Too many places to check for validation. Our solution, everything in one place on any internet connected device. So your journey starts at home, can continue in the car. You can always stay on top of your story that you're interested in. The benefits, simply explained, up to 90% speed increase. Only application that tells you what's trending inside your stories. And of course, sources. You can receive from our premium search, matching articles that we crawl every day, two and a half to three and a half million per day. And of course, personalization. You can sort by personal relevance. You can do a fact check, create, collaborate, and publish from within one application. You receive, of course, alerts if something happens that is relevant to your topic of interest. And it's integrated with third-party systems. The business model, $960 per user per year, including support, maintenance, and updates, plus optional packages that are protecting our large user base. The potential, when we look at the spendings that are published by Fortune Business Insight 21, is currently 13.5 annual, growing to 40 in the next couple of years. Our core market gives us a three billion market potential, and this is the first goal to reach. Competition. Competition. <laughs> we see that. Social listening, web crawling, other siloed environments. X News is different. The customer has the freedom of operation, in-house or in the cloud of choice, and also can connect their internal, their contracted, and their communications sources into the platform. Those are our current go-to-market strategies, and I would be delighted to have Peter and others on our partners, right? So global partnerships and regional and national experts. Uh, we're asking for an investment to grow the team, but that's the team that will protect the success. And of course, we have a great advisory report with an international track record. Let me tell you one story at the end, and I still I got a couple of seconds. How can you make a journalist in a training session with you jump out of the room? Did you do something wrong? No. 
they got back 10 minutes later because they spotted something and they needed to get it on air. Thank you. Questions from the jury? Yeah, what, what do you see as the biggest um, uh, commercial challenge to meet your commercial goals? Quite simple. At the moment, we are currently depending on an indirect only sales channel, which limits us to the markets our partners are. With the own sales team that we are trying to raise the money for now, we want to go after the EYs, PWCs, and all of them in order of multiplying and scaling. That's the biggest challenge at the moment. You've been, been, we have known each other for a long time, so you've been at it for a long time as well. How, has the, uh, how has the revenue part gone? Uh, uh, you, if, you know, you have to black out 2020, of course, right? Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, in, in the years, we doubled up until 2019, then 2020 came, yeah. and this year seems to be the first profitable year. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, taking up again. Thank you. Awesome. Hello. Welcome back. I hope you had some uh, nice refreshments and enjoyed the food. So we're going to continue. And the next uh, startup that is going to come pitch is Movie. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Lars. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Movie. Uh, in Movie, we're solving one of the biggest problems in media today, creator monetization. And we firmly believe that the future of creator monetization relies on co-creation and co-monetization. And creator monetization is a true problem. Only 2% of creators out there make minimum wage. That's Twitch streamers, people on Spotify, uh, even on like Patreon and OnlyFans. It's never been easier to create, but it's still really, really hard to monetize. So creators are now shifting to new monetization models, specifically blockchain. But that's really hard. And the key to creator monetization, we believe, is fandom. To give creators and fans a true connection to play together, to create this new metaverse of digital experiences. And why is Movie now positioned to solve this problem? This is because we view play as the experience where creators, fans, and content intersect. Play is a community. Play is a platform. Play is where monetization happens. And we're going about solving this by empowering anyone to build and host their own NFT storefront, to build interactive programmable NFTs together with their fans and monetize this together. And anyone can now receive crypto payments, crypto subscriptions in a mobile native dApp and a web dApp. And this will be a social space for creators, fans, and their content to intersect where they can co-create and monetize together. And the movie dApp will launch in November. It will be a place where any creator can bring in their online content from Web 2, Web 3, live streams from Twitch. They can link in tweets. They can give access to their Discord, all through programmable NFTs that can be built by creators and their fans together, sharing the monetization as it trickles down and spreads out across the internet. And we will reward anyone, so we're running a play to earn model. So anyone just watching video, playing video in our app will earn tokens, which they can utilize to buy access to more content from their favorite creators or sell them on an exchange. And we're working with 2D video today, but we believe the future of video is multidimensional. And our core patented playback technology is specifically made for this scenario to remix and merge the creation and playback experience into one playback experience. So anyone will be elevated from a pure viewer to prosumer, simply by touching and playing with the content. We already started experimenting with the new content types, like 360 video, volumetric video, 
And we want to be that meeting place for content, fans, and creators to interact. We've just started our initial token raise to fund this project. We've doubled our team in the last couple of weeks. We've brought in really experienced people managing like products like the mobile app from Spotify. Uh, and we're raising, uh, our first round has closed now, so we raised about $700,000 the last two weeks. The next rounds will start the next coming weeks. And I invite you all, come meet me after this. I'll put the future video in your hands so you can try it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the jury? Do, do you have any, um, do you have a user group? Do you have users using the app now or is it not there yet? So, the history of movie, we built this new video technology because we wanted to touch, play and create video in real time. We took this to market on a B2B licensing model with like big broadcasters in Asia, Europe, US, uh, but we saw that the world that we want to change or that we want to make is not compatible with current licensing models, legacy ways of building media distribution. This is where Web3 comes in. So we believe the way to change the world in our direction is to go directly now to the market of creators and enable them to do this directly without any intermediaries. So, yeah, we don't, uh, the app is launching in November, but we have the core technology and we already have uh, a set of tribal leaders, community leaders, that desperately want to build this kind of experience for their community. They don't want to give the content to Facebook or YouTube, and they want to own it, they want to control monetization, but mostly importantly, they want to have new ways to interact with their fans. Maybe two, two questions. Uh, you know, one is how are you going to bootstrap? I, I guess the success here is tightly coupled to the number of users you can get, and then the, how, how do you want to kickstart this part, and um, uh, the content that's being created, can that only be viewed on your platform, or can it, where? Yeah. Two great questions. So, first of all, we are bootstrapping, or the key ingredient in our sort of chemical reaction here is the creators. We need creators to bring their content and their fans. Creators can link existing content, live streams from Twitch, videos from YouTube, tweets, Discord, any like existing Web 2 or Web 3 content can be brought into our platform just by pointing your links. Um, second question. Yeah, is, is, is the, uh, the uh, viewing of the end result? Yes. The end result, yeah. The end result can be transcoded in our app, exported to Facebook, YouTube, wherever, and bring peop more people back to the app. Um, but part of our video technology enables us to script a composition of any media from any source and play it in real time in our app. Mm -hmm. So you can have more functionality in our player than, for instance, on Facebook, where it would be a flat video. Mm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Next up is Circular. Hi, everyone. Thank you. So today, you might wonder what I'm doing with these headphones on my neck. Bye. So that's something, it happens. This is a headphone speaker. So we are a startup, we started with a big problem. So there is a safety problem, uh, and it, the number one reason worldwide of accidents in micromobility in Europe and United States is people wearing headphones on the ears. Mostly, in most of the cities in Europe and United States and Australia, it's not allowed to use headphones. So back in the days, four years ago, I was one of the first micromobility users in Barcelona. And police stopped me first day I was using the headphones and they said, you cannot use the headphones. After six months, there was a law and this law is like you have to pay 250 euro if you wear headphones. It's not happening here, but it's starting to happen worldwide. So what, what we realize is that this is an amazing time for listening to music, to enjoy podcasts, etc. when you're commuting from home to work. And that's why we thought about creating a solution for these. So making an every device, which call it, we call it neck phones. And with the neck phones, you're allowed to turn it into headphones. So you can use it as a regular headphones and then turn it into neck phones. So we launched 
uh, a first, so we call it, we're sound wearables, and we're creating a new category which is called the neck phones. And we're also using our proprietary software with artificial intelligence, so we can direct the sound to your ears and not bothering people around you. That was our first MVP. We launched on Kickstarter, we validated the product um, with our team. So I'm Enoch, I'm a certain entrepreneur. I've been always developing since like over 10 years, different startups. Uh, we have different team members. We have an amazing uh, team of investors uh, coming from the field. Recently, also Bangor Lufsen, ex-CTO, joined our team. And we have Peter Chapman, probably one of the biggest experts in electroacoustics in the world, uh, coming from Harman Kardon, and that we join when we joined SoundHub in Denmark. So we also realized, like you want to be, you, I mean, you want to wear cool when you go around the city. And one of the main things is that if you don't have a cool product, you're not going to use it. And we also find that there is a, a huge potential for personalization on these products. And we realized like EarPass can be an interchangeable. This can be a benefit. It's more sustainable when they get old. And then also in winter, when it gets cold, you can use it around your neck with different materials like wool, etc. So with our app, we're, we're, what we're enabling is for people to go with their bicycle, for example. And what is happening here, that you will listen to music or whatever. Uh, Hi, we're, Bluetooth mode. As you can see. Bluetooth connected. So we're enabling people to listen legally and safely with the directional sound. We're launching a Kickstarter in February 2022, so in just a few months. And what we have developed, and we have the, the patent application on the directional sound. So you will be able to listen the music and, and make calls, etc., directly to your ears without bothering people around. This is the, probably one of, we compare to the noise canceling technology. So it's quite advanced technology uh, where we are applying with different patents. Further than this, we see that mobility industry is, is growing a lot. So there's a huge potential for advertisers to use our devices to make partnerships and to be using this time when we are commuting that we are more receptible to get information, especially through audio. So as you can see, we have different models. We have huge companies uh, which we're competing, but we're failing different uh, patents. So we believe like we want to be the, the first big player in the market and lead the transition, especially for the commuting people, which is a lot of people, and not with different devices, with one single device with high quality sound. So, so far, as I mentioned, we launched a Kickstarter. We got an exceptional 46% cross-selling with different accessories. We won seven international awards in Europe, uh, Waira in Germany, and O2 Telecom and also the South by Southwest Tech for Entertainment in the United States. So we also joined different accelerators and what recently we signed an agreement with Warner Music so we can launch the product as, we, as you know with some celebrities and bloggers and influencers which is quite important nowadays. Our revenue, our business model, so we have the, the hard tech, so we sell the, the product, we have the accessories, and we also have the software. So through the software, we also have the non-invasive sound. We can also sell and license these to different companies. So these are the financials. So we expect to, we launch a previous Kickstarter. So we already know the metrics and the conversion rate. So we expect to make in 60 months in February when we're launching our Kickstarter to make over a million euro in, in revenue. And by the end of the year, we expect to make 2.5 million in revenue. And in 2023, to grow into 6 million and much more with already the distribution agreements we have. And so we hope to find uh, business partners and to make partnerships here with some people related to media because that's, we want to enable great media to be played on our devices and to have special promotions. This is some of the money we're looking for investors. So anyone who might be interested, we're looking for investment as well. We're closing the round by the end of the year or half a million euro. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? How are you going to reach the, the millions of customers around the world? So we did already a previous Kickstarter. So we know we get 100K in revenue, investing 20K in, in advertising. So we're going to invest quite heavily on advertising in Kickstarter. And uh, I also know very well the platform since I have consulting other firms to reach Kickstarters over 2 million euro. So we're confident that we can make it.
<laughs> Do you have enough chips? Oh, that's a great question, yeah. Actually, we have a Qualcomm chipset. We have uh, already some experienced people in the team, and we have Bangor uh network, so we are, we are very concerned about that, but we make sure to have the chipsets, yeah. yeah. The, uh, and the uh, headphones themselves, uh, the, the, is that the cooperation with Harman Kardon? Was that what you said? So the electric acoustics of the new model are made by, by Peter Chaman, which is the... Uh, ex-director ex of electroacoustics from Harman Kardon. But you basically have designed the whole hardware part. And everything is ours, yeah. So, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All the designs, the patents and everything, and also the software. And the, with the patents, I mean, can you... I know Bursa had these ones, these neck phones. The sound wearables, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what can you protect that in patents that protects your idea? So, so what, what is special from ours is that in the new model, we have a, a special microspeaker on the outer side, and this one is directly pointing to your ears on the mid and high frequencies. So you can listen, and also through the software, we managed to make a non-invasive sound. And some other information I cannot provide now because we're, doing the, yep. we're filling the patents. Yep. So, but happy to share in a few months. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Next up is one tenth. Hello, my name is Alexi, and I'm a CEO and co-founder of Startup Wanted. And we help video content producers and distributors to determine their target audience reactions. It's not a secret that OTT uh, market is booming, and in three uh, years, average consumer will have five subscriptions. So. Uh, OTT platforms, TV channels, uh, video production companies face such difficulties as lack, um, lack of tools to estimate the quality of the content, limited ways to understand real viewers reactions, high customer acquisition cost, and high churn rate. So uh, our solution is AI-powered platform for conducting remote research, and the research is quite simple. Video is uploaded on our platform, viewers watch it with camera turned uh, on in natural conditions. In turn, our uh, AI models analyze engagement, attention, um, eye focusing, and as a result, our clients um, receive re re automated report with more than 25 parameters that allow them to make right decision either to invest or improve the content. Uh, we have already conducted studies in uh, North America, Europe, uh, GCC countries, and India. And it's just a quick example of uh, the study of testing marketing tools. It's a poster evaluation, and also trailer. We can uh, analyze how uh, this audience by segments, gender um, and uh, uh, age, they receive the, this content. And uh, since uh, 2019, we have already participated in uh, several programs from AWS and NVIDIA, and we ho have already raised uh, $600,000 uh, from uh, Venture um, Fund and uh, to Angels, and now we are happy to be a part of uh, Media Motor Europe. And for the next uh, six months, we are planning to enter EU market, also launch SaaS uh, uh, application, and also uh, preparing for the next round. We have competitors in um, uh, emotion recognition and marketing research, and uh, unlike our competitors, we are focusing on long journey of video content. For this, we do our own research in uh, AI and cognitive psychology, and are focusing on escapism, binge watching, and empathy. Uh, also, we care about uh, our privacy, uh, and uh, we um, do like protect our content and. Uh, uh, biometric of our uh, audience. And all this happened thanks to an amazing team. We have, uh, have experience in the, uh, content creation, software engineering, and research, and also have great uh, support from our advisors. Uh, now also we are um, like building SaaS model, uh, for, uh, and, but now we are working on project base with our clients. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, well, uh, who is actually your customer here? It's uh, OTT platforms, uh, uh, broadcasting companies, and creative agency also. Yes. Yeah, so you, you would have to. So like uh, you have to. Uh, Nielsen is a competitor for you, or what? Any rating company would be a competitor for you. 
well, companies that rate the uh, TV shows or the audiences? Yeah, we have competitors like uh, uh, in the US, uh, in Vogue, and uh, also in the uh, UK realized they uh, um, like read the um, content um, before the release and analyze the target audience reactions. We have, yeah. And maybe I... I, I no, I think that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, I, got, I didn't get the question. Uh, you had a SaaS subscription, but uh, then you have uh, some tools uh, I'm watching the movie and you're measuring my results. Uh, and how does this work for the company who is m buying the solution from you? Okay, uh, now we are working on project base, but for the SaaS, so for example, you have uh, you want to test your content. You upload uh, it on our platform and de uh, define all the, uh, your parameters for the target audience. Uh, we have integrated uh, panels, and after that, uh, all the um, uh, audience uh, uh, participants, uh, they receive the link, and after they uh, just need to uh, ex uh, allow us uh, access to the webcam and just watch. Also, we have uh, questionnaires for them, and uh, after that, we uh, collect all the uh, data, analyze it, and provide the automated report. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Rumble Studio. Welcome. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Joris. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Rumble Studio. My CEO, English speaker, uh, maybe you check my accent, it's a French accent. My CEO is British, but he's uh, managing his baby, so he can't come today. Um, at Rumble Studio, we deeply believe in audio, and in particular, into the voice, the power of voice. That's why we help companies to produce audio content for marketing. You are maybe waiting for slides, but no slide is coming. I'm just going to speak today. So, yeah. um, the idea is uh, that a lot of companies today want to produce audio content because the audio is booming. You have more podcasts listening every day. I don't know if you know, but in the last month, a third of the American people were listening to an episode of podcast. 25% of France, half of South Korea. More and more content, so more and more companies want to produce audio content. But there is the problem. Producing audio content is very, very expensive because people don't even know how to start. We had a lot of our potential customers on the phone and they say, what should I ask as a question? Uh, who should be the host? Who should be the guest? Is it 20 minutes, 25 minutes? Uh, what I have to put as a content on the web before putting my podcast? So all those questions, you have to pay to get the answer. It can be human resources in-house, a freelance, an agency, but at the end, it's money, time, and effort. And you need a lot of skills because if even you have the audio, how do you remove the silences? How do you respect the normalization sound processes you have to do to put it online? So all those questions, people can't do it if they don't have enough budget. So that's why we have Rumble Studio today. Rumble Studio is a SaaS platform where you go on, you create an account, you type in your questions if you have, if you have some, but if you don't, we provide them because we have a big database of questions and every new users give us the question. And once we have those questions, we send them to your guests. So your guests will receive an invitation, an email, and go on the platform. And after that, it's like a type form, like a Google form. But instead of typing text, they are going to record themselves. You record your question on your side, they record their answers on their side, and at the end, we put everything together. Question, answer, question, answer. We normalize, we remove the silences, we remove the repetitions. And what is uh, the strength of Rumble Studio is because this is async, you can lose the liveliness of audio sometimes. So my PhD in AI helps us to build the algorithm to understand what people are saying. So there is a question, maybe there is a piece of answer which is lacking. So there is a follow-up question, an automatic follow-up question saying, can you tell me more? Or you were speaking too fast or too slow, or a baby was crying just behind you, can you record again, please? So there is a proactive coaching and also to get more content. So this is about getting all the audio. Once we have it, as I said, we process it, we put it online, we put it on Spotify for you, we have the analytics and we give it to you so that you can start again. But the power of Rumble Studio is once you've been, once you've been uh, having your first questions, you can use the same questions with all your guests. Because five questions you send to one guest, two guests, 10 or 1,000, it's the same for us. It's just about sending an invitation. 
So finally, you can repurpose your content very easily. So this is Rumble Studio. Today we are a team of five and growing. We are looking for a front-end developers and an AI expert to help me. Um, my co-founder uh, is a professional podcaster, Carl Robinson, host of the Voice Tech podcast, so he's a domain expert of the podcast world. On my side, as I said, I've got a PhD in AI, so I'm able to build all the back end of the product and the front end. Um, we have a team of marketing people, Nirel here today, helping us to do a community management and putting our brand online, because finally what we are is a marketing company. We are here to help to give a voice to your brand. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? Um, yes. Um, do, do you have any uh, partners, partner customers uh, with any commitments? Yes. So we have customers. We have four, pay, four paying customers. One of them is Soundhound. Um, so they give us a monthly recurring revenue of less than a thousand euro. And uh, with them, we are iterating on the product which has been online for one year now. Did you cover all kinds of languages? I guess not, but uh, you cover the main languages then? Or so, of course, most of the AI models today are in English. Yeah. So, the product is developed in English. But more and more, the, that the community around AI for NLP processing and audio processing is starting to explode on other languages, like the classic ones, let's say French, Spanish, uh, and Italian. So, these are the next languages to insert into the app. It would be interesting to hear such a podcast, but I was wondering a bit about the dialogue between the guests, because can there be any dialogue at all? Yes, so it's an interesting question. You have different kind of users on the platform. You have some people that are going to play the game, so they understand that it's a fake interview in a way, and they are going to say, oh, thank you for your questions. Mm. So if they play the game, it's fine, and that's what the AI rookie is going to kick in and to improve this liveliness. Uh, but some don't, and so some people are just saying, my name is Joris, I thank you for this interview. And this is a little bit flat. So this is giving us friction. That's why the AI part is going to improve the, this, this, this site. So it's typical for some use cases. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Wanted TV. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cesar. I'm here with Joel. We are the co-founders of Wanted TV. Wanted TV is a social platform for video streaming. It provides movie suggestions between friends, TV show discussions, and recommendations. So you never get stuck on trying to decide what to watch again. I really enjoy watching TV, especially after a long day. However, lately, I spend half of my TV time on searching or trying to decide. If you ever get stuck on Netflix, it's very frustrating. And this is why, on average, people spend 20 minutes every day before they can find something to watch. Half of them turn to social media for movies and TV shows, and most people would actually prefer receiving recommendations from people they know rather than their streaming services. Why do you think they turn to people they know for movies? It is simply because they can provide more relevant recommendations, and this is why we created Wanted TV. Rather than talking about it, let me show you how it works with our MVP that is live on the App Store. Every user has a personalized home screen with a unique experience. For example, you will see the recent activities of your friends, such as what they liked, rated, or watched. To address the wasted time issue, we've added a single button to get instant recommendations. For each recommendation, you can either discard it, add it to your watch list, or mark it as seen. You can also see why something was recommended to you and on which platform it is available to watch. And finally, once you find something you like, with a single tap, you can see all details about it, including its IMDb rating, its trailers, and if any of your friends liked it. Now I'm going to hand over to Joel. Thank you, Cesar. <laughs> so thanks to your friends, Wanted TV is offering a new way to get inspired and decide what to watch. And this is something big players haven't tapped into yet. Because today, we are still looking at Netflix for our own personalized recommendations, IMDb for ratings and trailers, and we're still suggesting friends to each other on WhatsApp or Facebook. But thanks to Wanted TV, you will have all of that in one place only. The application is and will be free to use, and we will generate revenue through affiliate marketing, which is a $15 billion business globally, but we'll also be in a unique position to offer 
target advertisement by promoting new movies, like YouTube is doing today by showing your trailers. So the right trailer for the right audience. And finally, with partnerships, we want to offer the integration of our recommendation system to video streaming platforms. So we'll be targeting those millenniums that are heavy users of social media to three main channels. The first one is direct, direct reach on those online spaces that they're using today for video recommendations. Then brand awareness by creating and promoting original content such as watch lists. And finally, with partnerships, we want to access to the large and established customer pools. For example, here in Norway, you could get your own personalized recommendation based on your friends on your NRK service. So, so far we've been trusted by two accelerators, surveyed more than 500 different cost potential customers, and we took all of that feedback and it iterated several times on our MVP. You can see on the graph below the type of hard tractions we got from our latest MVP iteration back in February, with a steady growth in user registrations. So today we are about to soft launch our products and on track to get to product market fit by fine-tuning the product and applying our user acquisition strategy. We then want to expand to other platforms such as Android, but more importantly, smart TVs, because they're central to the TV experience these days. And finally, with partnerships, we want to further extend our reach. So this is our team, which is so far composed of Cesar and myself. We both have experience in global and media companies, such as Airbus and BBC, and we also have onboarded two advisors for strategic and media expertise. We are currently raising our first seed round and looking for partners. If you're interested in, please come and find us. You can download the app by scanning this QR code, and thank you. Thank you. Questions from the jury? Yeah, I'm just a little bit curious on how are you going to kind of test that your application and your development is heading in the right direction? And you said already you've done three iterations, but how are you going to make sure that uh, you, you keep on a successful path? So we've got 100 uh, weekly active users, or our early adapters, and what we do is with each iteration, we go and talk to them and get, receive the feedback and do the iteration and release a new version. So the idea is finding product market fit with this small tuning the engine and find, find it to basically find the secret sauce. And just to add on that, so we want, what we want to integrate is a feedback loop inside of the application. So the, the core functionality of the app is to provide you personalized recommendations. So we want to be able to retrieve feedback on those recommendations to know if they were useful to you. That's something we're going to actively ask to the users, but that's also something we can measure because we offer you the possibility to store to watch list, to recommend to friends, so we can build a lot of relevant metrics to know if the recommendations that we were giving to you were useful and were used in, uh, inside of the application. Where do you get the content from, and, or, or how do you get the content, the uh, information about the movies or series or all that? So we are currently using a third-party API maintained by public, so we can also maintain it, add new movies and content. So uh, the idea in the future, partnering up with streaming providers or any providers to get the content directly, so we don't have the dependency on this third party. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Calv Digital. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Elena, and good news, we're almost done for today. <laughs> um, at Kelp Digital, we work to make sure uh, and help photographers and other independent content creators to regain control of their work. How? By making sure that copyrights are easy to check and prove. Everyone practically, uh, today practically everyone is a content creator with millions of photos, videos, and blog posts created and published every day. Um, in theory, all this work protected by the very, mo very moment it's created. I'm a little bit shorter, so I'll do this. Um, right, so in theory, every photo, video, and blog post are created by uh, copyright from the moment of creation according to the law, but uh, the reality is different. If you look at the photography market, for example, about 80% of the photos published daily end up being stolen and misused without their author's permission. When we publish a photo or video, uh, our content frequently gets uh, copied, republished, probably altered, and as a result, 
the connection between the author, the creator, and the creative work disappears. Um, this leads to the fact that most of the content we can see online, user-generated content, has no authorship verification, no copyright attribution. Ultimately, content creators um, don't, uh, uh, cannot uh, fairly monetize their work, and people looking for the content online find it challenging to content original creator behind the work and license it directly fr uh, from them. The good news now is the right time to change the market. With the EU Copyright Directive coming into place, platforms will become liable for copyright infringement, which means not only independent creators, but also platforms and buyers will become interested in legally inquiring uh, visual content directly from creators. Well, the second reason uh, is unfortunate international COVID crisis, um, which left many people unemployed both in Europe and globally, and those people are looking for additional revenue streams which digital market provides. With Kelp Content Management Tool, we enable content creators to protect their work with legally binding digital copyright statements based on equipment verification and set their own terms under which others can access and use their work. With the launch of P2P Marketplace, we'll enable direct licensing uh, in, from the original creators, uh, secure and safe. Our solution will come under subscription, free subscription types, depending on the content creator's needs. And with the launch of the marketplace, we'll also charge a modest fee of 7% per licensing transaction. Kelp Solution has potential to create the entirely new segment within digital asset management market, as well as disrupt the established market of stock photography and emerging market on NFTs. We have three things to offer which none of the competitors on, all, on those markets have. Content authorship verification, legally binding digital copyright statement, and permanent secure decentralized storage. Uh, so far, we did a pilot for professional photographers, as uh, those are probably the most in need uh, of corporate protection. The professional photography gets stolen frequently, uh, extremely frequently. And we also work with professional photographers to uh, recruit them as ambassador for our solution. So later on, we can use word of mouth as our main marketing effort. At the moment, we are gathering feedback and improving our solution to launch out better early next year. Um, currently, we have over 100 professional photographers in our waiting list for the beta launch, and we estimate to have uh, the first 300 uh, customers, paying customers, in a year time. Currently, we're looking for 750 case to uh, support our beta launch and um, further development for the next 18 months. We are also open for partnership. Um, well, here's our team. I am uh, one of the co-founders with a background in uh, media communication and uh, regulation. And my co-founder is a uh, well, full-stack developer with, uh, who also a professional photographer. So we, that's yet another reason why we started with the photography market, because we understand it quite well. Our focus currently on a strong development team and uh, growing the community. And well, we all believe that uh, the market of creative content should be changed for better. Please join us and get in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Any questions from the jury? At all? Uh, the, um, it's of course, that's a real problem you're going after there. I just, and this would be interesting to know a lot more, but the quick question is, how is the, how, is the, um, how do the um, users of the content access and find the copyrighted content? How is that? Or is that the direct relationship between the, between the content owner and buyer? Um, if I got the question correctly, so, well, initially we start with content creators and we provide them a content management tool. But directly from Kelp application, Kelp content management tool, they can share the content with a unified link at any place on the internet. So it's discoverable, it can be on Facebook, Twitter, or personal blog, whatever not. But the thing is that the content is shared with a unique uh, link, 
which we call the unified link, and therefore it contains the information about the initial creator. Mm -hmm. And then it provides, it, it enables uh, people who stumble upon this content to contact them directly, which will lead them to the platform where they can license that uh, via P2P transaction. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, now it's time for deliberation, so we'll give the jury five minutes to finalize, gather their thoughts and their notes and uh, their calculations. Um, so we'll wait here five minutes and then we'll come back and they, they will announce uh, the big winner. Yes, so we're back and we finally know who the winner is. So we're not gonna make you wait too long. Um, one of our jury members, Odd, will announce um, who the winner is, but first will tell us who got the third place and the second place, because we still want to give out some goodies out. So, Odd. You gave us a real hard job today. Uh, every pitch was incredibly good, and you all solved real problems that are present in today's media world. Uh, we, give, we gave high score for the most of the companies. Each company, uh, we see that you have the right to be in this program. Um, we all agreed, the judges, that this is uh, sh uh, too short time to, to deserve uh, a really uh, well-funded um, evaluation. But we have uh, three winners. Uh, number three is uh, Circular. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, number two is uh, Quest Pass. AI beer. And number one is Voxelizel. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks. Uh, <laughs> donc, merci, Tyke, uh, all that. Gracias. Um, happy about winning the pitch. Happy to be part of Media City Bergen for the next two years, right? I'll have to come back over here and take a cruise on the fjord next time. <laughs> um, and yeah, happy to win because um, a lot of the, my colleague from the MME cohort had fantastic pitches. Great ideas, things that will shake the media industry. So, honored to be here today and have won the prize. Thanks. Do you want to explain something about the Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's now the end of the pitching contest. We're really glad uh, that you were able to make it here and pitch. I hope it was good practice, good experience, and that you will take the opportunity the coming days to network, to meet people um, in, in these events. Um, so I'm closing the event now. I just want to tell the startups to not go too far because we would like to take a group picture on the stage uh, after the event. So thank you all and enjoy your, your, your week. Bye.